Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I have something new on the bench here to show you today. And uh, if you're thinking about doing a build, maybe one of your first builds, this would be a really easy way to do it. Um, all you have to do really is to connect your camera, your VTX, and solder up your ESCs and the battery cable here. It's actually probably one of the cleanest, quickest builds you can do using an all-in-one stack. There's quite a few all-in-one stacks out there, uh, but this one incorporates the PDB on the very bottom and the ESCs all together. So you have a really nice clean build when you use these. You don't have those ESCs out on the arms. And you just have the motor wires running to this bottom board right here and the flight controller is on the very top. And by the way guys, this is the new version of the Flycolor Raptor. It's called the Raptor S. And what's different about this one versus the older one, and I say older one, older one in the multi-rotor world is actually like a couple weeks ago. Uh, we had the Raptor, it's called the 390. I did a video of that actual flight controller on my channel and it was, it was a lot of fun. And this one is different than the older one. It's about $3 more, but you have something really nice on here. You have dual signal coming from the ESC up to the flight controller. And what that means is if you have signal loss from one of your motors, um, somehow this board can do dual signal transmission, which is really neat. And I haven't really seen that before in some uh, PDB ESC 4-in-1 combos, but this is kind of cool. Uh, also, you have D-Shot on here. And the biggest difference between D-Shot uh, is the signal uh, frequencies that your ESCs are running. If, if it has D-Shot on there, that means it's running a digital signal on your ESCs to your motors. Now, the other signal frequencies that we use are called One-Shot, and one shot is analog, so D shot is digital and one shot is analog. So that's the difference there. So that makes quite a difference when we're talking about uh, relay times and speed of your ESCs. And a very smooth running motor, uh, almost a really almost a super quiet running motor. You've probably heard some multi rotors that are super noisy and then some just sound so smooth. Well, D shot helps it sound really smooth. So let's go ahead and break this board down. Um, you don't have to wire any wires coming from this bottom PDB up to the top. It's very clean. It just snaps off like this. There's pins from the PDB on the very bottom here. Uh, ESC is coming up and this is where that dual signal transmission comes from right out of here up to the F3 flight controller. It's not an F4, but you know what? I had a lot of good luck with F3s in 2016 and uh, I'll still fly them in 2017. I'm not, uh, I don't have to go all F4 yet because it's been a reliable board for me, but I'll go ahead and show you these a little closer and I'll show you how simple these boards really are. So this is that PDB all-in-one for you, ESC combo with D-Shot, uh, all that good stuff right here. And these are your motor wires that will come off of each motor. You have motor one, motor two, motor three, and motor four here. And what you simply do is you take those three wires that come up from this number one motor back here, and they solder right onto these three tabs right here. And then motor two, you just run those wires over to here, solder them onto here on those three tabs. Uh, on motor 3 and motor 4 and you're done with your motor configuration that's really really nice and after that you just have to go into uh, beta flight or clean flight whichever one you want to use on this board and uh, make sure that you set up your configuration to make sure that uh, you're running the correct version of the the uh, ESC firmware for say like D shot or something like that but they are BL heli so if you really wanted to get crazy you could go into BL heli and you could do a little configuration maybe update the ESCs as well so the very back of this board we have these two tabs right here come off and this is for your battery you also have battery wires and all that good stuff in the box that came with it. Um, and you have your four standoffs here, of course. Let's take a look at the very bottom. Very clean pin configuration on the bottom. All the solder joints look really, really nice and clean here. Uh, this is some super, super tiny work on this board. Now, it does say in the manual that you can get it in 20 amp or 30 amp version. I believe I have the 30 amp version right here. Uh, constant current, 20 amps, uh, 30 amp burst current up to 30 amp on the 20 amp version and 40 amp on the 30 amp version so that's pretty cool and you're running 
two to four cell lipo on here you can't run any more than four cell on this circuit uh, board or this pdb or it will actually fry it but the weight on this this entire stack is around 20 grams so you're not going to add a lot of weight to your copter with these usually these flight boards are pretty lightweight uh, they're just a pretty thin wafers usually so this is a 36 by 36 design also and that's pretty much a standard millimeters uh, from corner to corner and it fits around 120 size quads up to about 330 size is what they recommend now on both of these boards very simply they have a little arrow that points forward and it lets you know which direction that the board faces on your multi-rotor so if you're building this one you're using it for the first time uh, the arrow on the bottom board is right here you can see it's facing forward and normally we have the battery terminals back here anyway and that usually signifies the rear of the quad uh, so this goes on just like that right over top and those pins will push down into place and so be pretty careful when you're putting these together because you don't want to uh, bend the pins right here on the pdb esc combo now this flight controller, it is an F3 like I was saying. We have a lot of options for running different receivers on here. If you guys want to run S bus, you want to run PPM, or you want to run the uh, older traditional PWM, you can also do that. You have your USB port here for your simple upgrades and uh, firmware updates on the flight controller. And the really cool thing is right here, they have the world's tiniest boot button so there is a new style boot button that they're starting to put on these and this is a much smaller one it might be a little harder to press with your finger you might have to use a tool or something to press that but there it is and i'll try to show you that just a little bit closer you can see that little sort of bronze colored tab right there it is a little miniature button now over here this first one on the very top on this side we have this is for your video transmitter uh, your VTX will plug in right here, and it's labeled right on the board here, ground, 12 volt, and signal. So you want to make sure you match those up with your, your, uh, your VTX, whatever video transmitter you're using. Now, if you get a cable in this box over here that is different than what you have, uh, say you, you get a VTX, but it's from another company and it doesn't match up with this port, all you have to do is cut the cable connector off of the VTX that you currently have and solder it directly onto the wire that would be coming into this terminal right here. So uh, I don't know if I've told some of you guys that, but some of you guys that are new kind of, you get a little frustrated when the connectors are different, but really all you have to do is match up the black wire, the red wire, and sometimes the yellow wire for your video signal, your S, your S wire. And this port right here, guys, this is the RSSI port, and I'm probably not gonna use that on my build. You might not use it on yours either. So now you guys are looking at the bottom of the board, and this is still the F3 flight controller. If you have your USB port here, if you're following along with this video, you can kind of use this as a guide for yours. You have that little dual transmission port right here. The pins are going to plug in from the ESC, 4-in-1 ESC right here on that side. Uh, and these four ports on the bottom, that's a lot of ports on this board, by the way. This one up at the top here, this is for your LEDs and your buzzer. The first three wires up at the very top, those are going to be for the LEDs. That's ground, 5-volt, and LED. And the next one down the two last two in that stack are for the buzzer so if you have a beeper on here you can put your 5 volt and your ground signal at these bottom two 5 volt here and ground here the next one down in the very middle that's for your s bus receiver port that's going to come out to your receiver simply uh, and that's i believe that's a 5 volt port as well now down at the very bottom here we have a 12 volt port and this is actually to run out straight to your camera so this is going to feed the osd feed that's in here uh, straight to your camera which is very very nice uh, and out through your your vtx so we will get a nice osd display on this you'll have battery telemetry all that cool stuff uh, voltage and everything on screen now the last board down here that's an isp programming OSD debugging um, port for working on your OSD if you decide to choose to uh, play around with your OSD configuration. What if I want to run PPM? Uh, so if you want to run PPM, this RSI SI port, this is the very bottom signal right here, the very top part of this 
pin configuration up here is for your PPM receiver. And at the very top, you have ground, 5 volt, and your channel 1 signal wire going in there. Um, so that's, that's the way you would do that. And then, of course, your VTX port is there. And how do I run it in PWM mode? Well, you can use the same port to run PWM mode on here. Uh, that's the one, that's the signal wire cable harness in here that has every single wire on here you'll have all these wires coming out the side uh, it's kind of an older way of doing things and I don't really recommend using PWM but hey if you do use that I will respect you at the field no problem PWM PPM S bus whatever floats your boat uh, it's kind of an, like I said kind of an older way and a lot more wires because PW PPM only has three wires that you have to use here coming off that you can omit the rest of those wires and S bus uh, also uses three wires, but you're going to run that off the bottom in the middle here Let's go ahead and take a look at what comes in the box all the wires that come along with this and some of the accessories So moving right along. This is the fly color Raptor s if you're just tuning in you have your Plastic these I believe these are m2s and these are the nuts that go on the very top of the stack to hold the f3 flight controller down this is so easy the way this sets up. I love this. You guys are so spoiled these days being able to build something so quickly. Um, you know, you can have a build done in less than an hour now with some of these all-in-one flight controllers. It's really cool. Older builds where I was building like a ZMR 250 a couple years ago, uh, probably taking us, you know, four or five hours to get that PDB and uh, body all set up on that old uh, ZMR250. But we're out of those days now, thank God. So, but some people still do fly those. So uh, XT60, pretty standard, what you're gonna get with this board, and that just solders right onto the back there, very simply. And you get your extra hardware here, just in case you need it to uh, connect to the very bottom of this, through the bottom of your quad. Some people like to use actual uh, the uh, aluminum bolts that go through the bottom, or you can use these. These are plastic, and those are just fine. If they break, you can replace them. They're pretty cheap. So you have a couple cables in here that look very similar, and I believe these are for your VTX here, and this one would be if you wanted to run power coming off your VTX and power your uh, straight to your camera and your video signal here. So if you wanted to do kind of an all-in-one wire there, that's pretty cool for that harness. And then you also have some receiver wire in here with a little, looks like a little servo lead here, but that's got all of your uh, signal, five volt and ground on this one. And if you don't want to use that, you can snip that off and you can just simply solder it straight to your receiver. And then you have that large cable like I was talking about that has all those extra wires, kind of the old school th way of doing things. This is that PWM. Uh, receiver set up here. It's a little large, takes up a lot more space, uh, just kind of bulky in my opinion. And then we have some extra style connectors for powering say your LEDs or uh, anything else you might want to uh, have on this board. So some of you guys that get this, don't worry about all these cables because a lot of this doesn't really matter. Um, you're not going to use half of this stuff. Some, some people get stuff and they get confused because they think they have to use everything uh, in the box. You don't. They're just including extra stuff. So don't worry about the extra stuff. Now let's go ahead and give you my final opinion on this new product. Do I think it's cool? Yeah, I do. And it saves a lot of time if you're going to do a build. This will save you a ton of time. Like I said... If you were taking your time, you could actually have your motors and everything set up in under a half an hour. So that's pretty amazing for this board. And you have integrated OSD, D-Shot, all that cool stuff, and a micro boot button on here. If you decide to reflash this board and put the, the latest and greatest firmware on here from Betaflight, you can do that. That's no problem. So another cool product from these guys over here at Fly Color. So... I'm Justin Davis, you guys. Thanks again for watching. I enjoyed showing you this new flight controller. As always, I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.